Good evening, everyone, and thanks for tuning in to episode 65 of the uh, Matt Maddow Skill Trains podcast. I am one of your hosts, Matt Rochford, and with me is always, well, is my singular co-host, uh, Mr. Matt Z. Matt, how you doing tonight? Doing pretty good, man. I think uh, we're going to have a good episode here. we got a great team. Can't wait yep. for this one. Yeah, well, this is something that we look forward to every year. Well, twice a year, actually. And uh, tonight, we'll be discussing the Lionel 2023 Volume 2 Catalog. Uh, now, this came out uh, earlier uh, this month, but uh, like we've been doing for the past, like we did in the last episode uh, of the catalog, we want to we want to like let the catalog sink in with folks, uh, have them review it, and then come up with some questions uh, that they have. That way we can bring them on the show here and we can ask Ryan and Corey and Megan because they're the experts. And uh, we can ask them if, uh, you know, if there's something in the catalog that's maybe doesn't look right. Or maybe if we want to ask about some specific part on an engine. Um, so, you know, the routine, same as uh, again, same as the volume one. Uh, and we do have a pretty good list of <laughs> questions uh, for volume two, as always. Uh, but uh, again, we won't be doing this alone. So uh, we want to welcome uh, from Lionel, Mr. Ryan Kunkel. Ryan, how you doing? I'm doing great, Matt. Great to be back. All right. Well, thanks for coming on. And then, of course, uh, we have Megan Frazier from Lionel. Megan, how are you? I'm great. Excited to be back on with you guys. Awesome. Well, happy to have you as well. And uh, of course, Corey Harwell, too. Corey, how you doing? Doing great. Um, nice to be here again. And last but not least, of course, is our favorite model railroad YouTuber, Mr. Eric Siegel. Eric, how you doing tonight? How's it going? Always a pleasure to be on the show. Really excited about this one. Thank you for all of the guests tonight for coming on. We, we do appreciate your time. All right, well... Uh, everyone knows how this works. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go through the catalog. So this time I am sharing a, a visual of the catalog. Uh, you won't see that, obviously, on the podcast. Uh, but when we do put this up on YouTube, um, it will be available there because, uh, you know, we're going to have audio and video. Uh, so uh, if you want to watch this on YouTube, you can you'll be able to see the catalog as well as we kind of go through it. Um, so let's uh, let's just not wait any longer and let's step right through it. Okay, everybody, before we get started, I just wanted to give a quick note that we did run into some technical issues with Eric's audio channel. So for the first 30 minutes, he is in only a few segments, and you don't hear from him all that much. Uh, this is because there was a, a technical issue on the audio side from the, you know, the audio portal system that we use, and I couldn't save the audio, unfortunately. With that said, uh, I do apologize, uh, firstly, to Eric. Uh, obviously, we don't want these things to happen. And also to the audience. So I know you were looking for a lot of Eric's input. Um, so, uh, again, you know, he did a review of the catalog as well uh, on his uh, you know, YouTube channel. Uh, so if you're looking for some insight uh, for the first 30 minutes or so, you can go there as well. Uh, but rest assured... After the 30-minute mark, uh, he is in full audio mode, and uh, there's no issues after that. So I uh, appreciate everyone listening, and uh, let's continue on. So we're going to start on page 8 and 9, and we have the F-19 Pacifics. So these are, first of all, these are absolutely stunning. Um, and when's the last time that you guys did F-19 Pacifics? I believe the last time we did these was 2007. It was right before we started switching things over to Legacy. So this is the first time this locomotive's been done uh, with full Legacy and not just TMCC. Yeah, these are these are absolutely fantastic. Um, besides Legacy, uh, was there anything else done to these? And are there any like new road names for these as well? Uh, definitely some new road names, uh, new features, of course. Um, you know, from 2007 to 2023, there we've made a few small <laughs> tweaks and changes in our control systems and uh, sound and uh, smoke features and so forth. Uh, so you're going to see all of the latest legacy uh, electronics and features in here, including the blue, Bluetooth control, whistle steam, fan-driven smoke, the uh, 
current version of rail sounds, five different whistles, different bell pitches, etc. Uh, we've done every conceivable possible um, variation of paint for the CNO uh, that these locomotives wore. Uh, and then we've also made a few nice fantasy schemes as well. I like the little logo on what is that? The is that the water heater, feed water heater on top? Yeah, the, the feed water heater on these got uh, a couple of different um, heralds on it, depending on the the assignment of the train. So uh, you had the eagle when they started off on the sportsman, and then the George Washington. Of course, you got his silhouette there. Um, these, even though they have sort of this brutish front end, they were premier passenger power when they uh, came to the railroad uh, around 1931, 32. I've if I remember correctly. Um, and so they were always kept with high polish, a lot of extra uh, ornamentation where they could put it, like the, the cylinder head covers and so forth. So a, a real neat combination of fancy passenger power with something that looks probably more at home on the point of a freight train when it's coming at you. Matt, Z, did we have any questions on the F-19 Pacifics? Yes, we did. Um, so I'll go through them, and Ryan, you can answer them. I'll go through the next one. Uh, first question is on the non Vanderbilt tender versions, like the CNO, you know, I believe that's 492 up on top top right. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Those are going to have the L2A Mohawk tender or the Burke tender. I forget which one. It'll be it'll basically be the Burke tender behind those. Okay. And then uh, the same one, I believe. Uh, the 492, uh, the question is asking about, uh, will it have the CNO reporting marks under the cab and under the forward sand dome? Uh, yes, yes, it will. Okay. And then if you want to go to the next page, Matt? Yep. So for the RF and P one, the question is asking about the uh, boiler being blue. That's how it's going to look in the final model? Uh, yes, as you know, as, as close as our catalog renditions ever look to a final model. Um, but uh, yeah, the uh, the RFMP had some blue boilered Pacifics, and it was a nice dark, um, rich blue. So that's what we're going to go with on here. Thought that added quite a nice little touch to it. Yeah, it looks really cool. I like that a lot. The Christmas uh, Slave Bell Limited one's really nice. I know a buddy of mine is he ordered the whole E8 from the last catalog, and he's mm-hmm. really excited for that. Yeah, that's that was sort of our, our thinking on this was that if you had the uh, the E eights and and those passenger cars on order, this gave you a second set of power uh, to run if you wanted to switch out steam for diesel. Uh, and if you hadn't ordered the E eights, but were still kind of tempted on the passenger cars, this gives you another excuse to to get those too. There you go. And maybe this is kind of jumping the gun a little bit. You can cut this part out if you want, but. Uh... Was there any plans to continue the passenger cars for those, like a, maybe a hot chocolate diner or something, a Station Sounds diner, or a big dome or something like that? Yeah, we have a Station Sounds diner um, in the seven cars that we've done already. Uh, but I've ha- I have had some other requests and some other ideas for different uh, cars to add in there. So I think um, probably in C1 or uh, maybe a little further down the road, uh, we usually put most of our Christmas stuff in the Volume 1 catalog. Uh, but this one just sort of snuck in there it was too good not to do uh so we added that one here but yeah you will definitely see as things go on uh some more of more cars to go in that train uh it's turned out so wonderfully i'm, I'm sure this is not the last you'll see of the sleigh bell limited sweet all right that's all we got for the f19 megan did you help design that halloween one i had some input yes <laughs> uh that that bat that bat on the front is like just literally the best thing ever <laughs> it's so cool all right so i had a question on the pricing on the f19 the price is really good is there a particular reason for that sure the, well the reason behind the price on this is it's really the same reason that the prices are set for everything in this catalog and, and all of our catalogs we base our price off of for to you off of the price that that we get uh from the factories so whatever it costs us that's you know that's where we start from uh for all of you and uh, i'm sure this engine is probably you know in in comparables to other locomotives we probably could have put another couple hundred dollars a piece on there and um you know that may have made some people in the company happy but that's not what we're about we you know we do try and keep costs down wherever we can we got a really good deal on these from the factory. And so that's what we're passing along on to all of you. And um, yeah, so we're just happy when, when we can put out an engine for uh, 12 or 1300 bucks instead of 17 or 1800 bucks. Believe me, we're, we're just as happy as you guys are to see that in the catalog. 
yeah, I think it might be due to the fact that this engine has like just a lot of visual detail on it and it not that it gives the the look of a vision line, but with whistle steam and all of that those intricate parts and little details on there, the thing looks a lot more expensive than maybe it really is. I don't know if that's a good take on that. Yeah, you know, it's it's not a it's not a huge locomotive. It's a you know it's a yeah. Pacific, uh, but yeah, you're you're right. It definitely has a lot of extra drippings uh, attached onto it, and there are a lot of freestanding parts on this. A lot of lost wax. Um, kind of kicking myself. I should have done a pilot version of this one, um, but it uh, again. I think this the smaller size of the engine has a, a lot to play in that overall, um, and it's uh, when the factory felt they could build it at, at our and support this price point. So we're taking it and running with it. Awesome. Yeah. Home run here for sure. All right. Let's move on to our next. Oh, well, I guess, no, we got, uh, we got cars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We haven't run the, the George Washington CNO passenger car since 2007 either. So I figured they had gone long enough um, and we go ahead and run those one more time uh, for everybody who, hasn't picked them up yet. Uh, so these will have all of our current standard 18 inch passenger car features. Um, they'll look right at home. Of course, the train name on these is the George Washington. Uh, so if you're getting the cars, then the two locomotives you'd want for this are the ones on the facing page there. Uh, one with and one without the CNO uh, donut herald uh, there. But um, yeah, the passenger cars themselves is pretty, pretty smart looking train. Uh, this is one of the few trains early on that carry the train name instead of the Pullman name over on the letter boards and so it's a really attractive train and a premier train and one for cno fans i'm sure you'll want to add to your collection i'm curious for those that don't know and obviously you could probably just read it up here but why why is it called the george washington well cno uh coming uh where they were in virginia and and so forth was was highly tapped into their uh virginia route uh heritage and uh you know they they wanted to name the train after the uh, the founding father, so it gave them that connection. Awesome. All right. Um, anything else on the uh, on these passenger cars? All right. Let's continue to move on here. So we got some two six six twos. When's the last When's the last time that you guys ran this one? <laughs> This hasn't been nearly as long as the F-19, but I think it's been uh, at least uh, two or three, maybe four or five years. What seems like two or three years now is probably five or six for me. They start to blend together. Uh, <laughs> but we have done this one fairly recently, so it's it's had its legacy upgrades and so forth. Uh, and it, it's a little bit more shovel-ready than some of the other projects in here. Uh, but we really wanted to... Um, we've had a lot of requests for us to do the uh, Western Maryland Scenic 1309 uh, on this body. So we put that in here in the catalog and did a few other uh, freelance railroads as well. Yeah, these are really cool. The uh, The one that really catches my eye is the NNW. Is that one kind of similar to the Class A where it was just the lettering underneath the cab and not on the tender? Yes. Yeah, this is, represents their, their earlier uh, decoration schemes uh, where the tender was pretty much just black and they had the small lettering under the cab. Um, you know, the NNW was never really a, what I guess you would say a, a flashy railroad, but this was even more subdued than usual. Uh, they had some similar 2662s, nothing quite exactly like this. They were, uh, you know, the US, these were the, based on the USRA design, uh, which was really a CNO and a Wheeling and Lake Erie engine. Uh, but this, the early uh, Zs on the NNW we're not uh, too far away from these, you know, if, if you squint hard enough, uh, you can, you can correct the details and they're, they're a very reasonable stand in for folks who uh, want a nice, smaller, big engine for the layout. I think that's where I really like these locomotives is that they are big enough to give you that big locomotive feel, uh, but they'll still do, you know, the 054 curves and so forth. So they're a little bit more, if not small layout, at least medium layout friendly than say a class A or a big boy. Nice. Uh, we did have a couple of questions on these. The first one was actually I can answer this because I was looking at the custom run section from Mister Muffin, and he the question was asking about uh, why have why is there no uh, Wheeling Lake Erie or CNO uh, Muffin is doing a CNO version of one of these. Uh, 
Yes, I think he may have uh, requested a Wheeling and Lake Erie as well. And the reason that we didn't do those is, is, quite frankly, we've done them in every release of this locomotive up to this point. So just wanted to hit some different road names. And, and CNO, especially since, you know, we just went through what, eight pages of CNO Pacifics. So we thought we'd you know, give the CNO guys a, a little bit of a break. Uh, another question, and this is actually in the general section, but why well, talking about custom runs, is there a, uh, could you guys maybe um, think of maybe a future website edition? Could uh, you guys make a section um, for all the custom runs uh, from the various dealers? That, that's what the question was asking. Uh, it's definitely something we've had requested before uh, and something we'd have to talk about and get set up on the web. Um, it would it would have to be something we would go back in and do uh, because some, you know we'll get a lot of orders for customs that then uh, they don't always go through in production. So we'd have to go back and take out the uh, the ones that didn't make the cut and so forth. I'm thinking hard about the Western Erlen one. I my only reservation is that if I get that, I know I'm going to have to get the passenger cars. <laughs> So it's on the maybe pile. Um, I have one question. Uh, one question from the Discord on this one on the uh, CNO thirteen oh nine, and then I'll hand it off to Ryan. Is on this one they're asking about uh, uh, front mounted number boards and a black smoke box. So we went with the um, the number boards. I can look in to see if I can moving those, but for right now, this is sort of where they fit. Uh, the the smoke box I've seen various colors of graphite even in its short time uh, in service so far so uh, it'll be a darker color for sure it won't we've, we've moved away from that sort of you know everyone called the primer gray um, but I'll look and see we'll try and match that as close as we can to the uh, to the current locomotive looking to expand your collection check out trains.com trains is your go-to place for new and used model railroad products they have everything ranging from engines rolling stock parts track and scenery if you need it they probably have it with new discounts being added daily you'll be sure to find something you like plus trains offers a newsletter which keeps you up to date on new items discounts and upcoming promotions we've been using trains for years and we highly recommend their stellar service What's really cool is you can also collect points by buying trains and using them on future purchases. With their awesome rewards program, you can earn points on every purchase that you can use for future discounts. Dedicated modelers can also join their private car membership to get exclusive access to new listings, earn 5 points per dollar spent, and unlock great benefits like no questions asked returns. Trains not only sells trains, but also buys them too. If you've got a large collection or are interested in downsizing and making some cash, you can head on over to sellmytrains.com. It doesn't get easier than that. You can find them using our affiliate link, www.trains.com slash MMOP, or if you want to use our one-time promo code MMOP, you can get $10 off a single purchase on the trains.com website. So check out trains.com and start expanding your collection today. All right, so we just have some, uh, we have some more consolidations. Some new road names, some new detail options on these. Um, we like to try and put at least one 031 compatible uh, smaller steam locomotive in each catalog, uh, hopefully with you know a smaller price tag to boot. Something that f folks with smaller layouts looking for full legacy features in the scale size engine can uh, can look forward to. And the consolidation is one of our engines that, that fits that bill quite nicely. And pretty much every railroad had a consolidation. So uh, they were certainly not all identical by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, we do our best to add what little details we can to customize them uh, and give you at least some, some nice uh, small power for, uh, you know, uh, enjoyment. I don't, I don't, I don't think I have to tell you to, uh, I don't think I have to tell you which one uh, has been talked about quite a bit and folks that are excited for it. You can, you can probably, you probably know which one I'm talking about. <laughs> well, it's, it's gotta be the Lehigh Valley, right? I mean, shoot so many, so many people have been, buzzing about that since since it came out uh you know it's, it's definitely one of the ones I'm, I'm most excited about and look at all that extra bling that the, the valley put on it i mean geez it's it's it just jumps off the page at you <laughs> no that that wasn't the one no that wasn't it <laughs> it's got a it's got a big red thing on the front of it <laughs> yeah that one is neat too and when we were looking at the at the prototype photos 
uh, you know, I, it didn't always have the plow, but a lot of the photos late, late in its, its years, the CNS engine had that. And uh, Dave said, you're doing the plow, right? And I said, well, you know, we could go either way. It's it's big. He goes, ah, it's just a big last lot. lot lost wax casting we could put on there if you don't do it with a plow i want the plow so it's like, okay dave we'll do the plow uh, so he's usually the one griping about prototype variations but if dave says do it then we, we do it so you can you can thank him for tipping the scales on that one <laughs> kudos to dave thanks for that <laughs> it definitely sets it off for sure yes oh yeah when you uh take the plow off you would see the pilot behind it correct correct yes okay we did have one question on this one, and that was, uh, could front steps be added to the uh, Black River and Western uh, number 60? The catalog does not have them, the question says. Yeah, uh, it's one of the things we looked into, uh, and we didn't have it incorporated into the design. Uh, so it's, uh, I won't promise it at this time. It's, it's not likely to happen. Um, the reason being, you've got the, the steps that are there that do jut out from below the running boards would have to be then cut off and, and ground down and so forth. So uh, things like that get a little, little bit more tricky. Uh, where I can change things out like headlights or a bell location or uh, you know even a pilot, we try and do as much of that as we can. Uh, but when you start having to modify things that are actually on the existing boiler uh, and changing them, or have had a lot of requests for, for uh, wall shirts, valve gear on some of these. Uh, those take us to a whole new level of complexity, uh, and that starts to fight against one of our, our goals of these locomotives, which is to, to keep the price points reasonable. All right, I have one observation, and this is mine alone, but I would say the one with the plow on it would make a pretty good christmas version too you know christmas consolidation i mean you got a snow plow in the front of it i mean it all adds up it's not a bad idea that is not a bad <laughs> idea i'm sure once we have that thing tooled up it will not be the last time you see a big snow plow in front oh, of an engine. i'm sure i'm <laughs> sure <laughs> all righty let's uh let's move on to our next page and yep we have some m1s mm -hmm. so this is uh while not all new tooling uh this is uh by the time we got done with it almost all new tooling on this locomotive uh from our old m1a uh, we've made a lot of changes it started off with uh just updating the cylinder saddle to represent the earlier m's and then it uh, it turned into new pilots we shrunk the pilot truck down we moved the switches up under the domes course we've got uh, three different tender options behind this thing uh, so dave and i uh, just you know threw it all in and, and made all the upgrades that we wanted on this this locomotive uh, to get the tooling up to where we we felt more happy with it and i'll also add that we were doing this sort of at the last minute so the creative team had to cobble things together uh, for this virtual art to try and keep up with us and just today we got the revised art for this uploaded onto the server so probably uh, by the time you all are listening to this, uh, I would ask, you know, go take a look at Lionel.com and you, you should see updated product images, which will look a lot cleaner and give you a better sense of the, the different details and so forth on these locomotives. Uh, these are fantastic. I, I know when I first saw this page in the catalog, I'm like, these are great. You know, I actually, I had to, uh, do some research on these myself because I was looking at the road numbers specifically of the passenger version. Mm -hmm. And I remember Googling some, uh, what I now know is M1A mm -hmm. uh, 6707 uh, wearing the passenger stripes. And I looked at the number on my way, this doesn't match up. <laughs> so then I scrolled, I scrolled through the, uh, some articles and I'm like, Oh, these are true M ones, not M one A's. So now it all makes sense. Yeah these that passenger one is beautiful i love that with all the striping and oh that's a beautiful engine uh yep that's the one yeah, yeah that one's really cool yeah that paint scheme did not last very long on these locomotives and and uh, only about 25 of them i think were initially si assigned to passenger service but it's too nice looking not to to do one. I'm sure that'll probably be, if not the top seller out of this uh, this group, certainly right up near near the top with all that decoration on it. Oh yeah, I have the uh, the long haul K4 with the pinstripes. Mm -hmm. That that would look fantastic with this. 
So that'd be that would be really cool. And I, I did have a, a question. You can strike this part out of here, uh, Matt, but I'm looking at the one with the Q2 tender. Mm-hmm. Is there a chance we'll see a legacy or vision line Q2? There's always a chance. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's it uh but yeah, I can't comment any further on it right now. Okay. That's perfectly fine. I appreciate it. That's the uh, eight wheel tender, the the really big one. Uh, there was a couple questions on these. Um, the the first one is one I kind of like. Is uh, they're asking if we ever see a super bass uh, sound system in the one of the long haul tenders from either this or the I one from the last catalog. That's a, a really good question uh, and a really neat idea. Uh, I, it's something I would have to take uh, back to our audio team and see what we could do with it. Um, we don't have room in this one because of the size of the boiler and so forth. But one of the things we do like to do, as, as you all know, is when we have an engine big enough, is to put a speaker up front in the locomotive and then at least one or two speakers in the tender. Uh, and that gets you a similar, if not a super bass effect, it, it does give you a nice balanced sound and uh, really improves things when we have that that third speaker in there. Uh, but it's it's something I'll I'll probably be talking to the audio team and getting uh, scorned at uh, for tomorrow now. So so thank you. It's going to be fun. <laughs> Super bass auxiliary yeah. tenders would be an option. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. There you go. That that would be really cool. Uh, put put, put whistle steam in them just for the heck of it. <laughs> <laughs> Tender whistle steam. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> One. So the question's asking about the F-19 and this M1. Uh, they will or were not, will not have the kinematic draw bar. Oh, that's a good question. Uh, the, the F-19, I, we did not uh, work that in there. But this one, I am going from memory here, 90% sure that we did add the kinematic draw bar. Sweet. Uh, right. I, I will double check on that and confirm with you uh, in the morning when I can pull up the design files and check that. Uh, but I think it's something that we looked at. The only reason we wouldn't have done it on here is uh, three different tenders to try and match it up with. <laughs> that, that is true. And there is one general question on this, and this is uh, something I know a friend of mine is really curious on, is the shade of the Pensy green. He's asking if they could be closer to like the CC2 or mm-hmm. the first run of the K4s, 210s, or the 2014 run of the M1A. Yes, and that's a, a, a good question and one that I've I fielded quite a few times um, in over the last few catalogs as the green started, has had really drifted away um, at, on, on some of our recent Pensy steam locomotives. And the good news is there that we've, we've now uh, grabbed that and brought it back into alignment where it needs to be. Uh, so I have a new approved uh, dark green locomotive enamel uh, sample back at the office. You'll see it on the I-1s when they deliver here next. Uh, and then these M's and, and future Pensy steam and diesel will, will carry on with that. Um, the L-1s are still a little, we're still a little greener than they should have been. Uh, better, I think, than the, the last round of Pensy steam that we did. Uh, but the I-1s and then these M-1s will definitely be a much darker uh, DGLE as they should be. Perfect. Thank you. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, anything else on the M1s? Otherwise, we'll uh, continue on. Hey, look who's back. <laughs> there Good it is. Yet. We got some... Uh, Don't stand by. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. The classic. <laughs> we got another, got another challenger scheme here, too. <laughs> yeah. We're going to have a hot dog eating contest one of these years. Yes, <laughs> we are. <laughs> People love that one. I'm you keep doing you. it. It's just it's oh, just yeah. so hard to say no to that. Even though uh, I've already got a, a uh, uh, 844, I'm like, dang it, I can't can't say no to that to hot dog paint scheme. <laughs> it just looks so good. <laughs> well, it's definitely a paint scheme we haven't done on the FEF before, so uh, fairly unique on that that one. But yeah, we've hit the uh, we've hit all the other big UP steam now a couple times, so we've had a lot of requests to bring this back, and uh, it's been in the been the plans for a couple of years now, so we felt it was time. Yeah, this is one of those things that you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm sure from a business point of view, this is one of those things that always sells well because people just love this, love it. So, so it's always nice to see it in the catalog. 
And there's so many cool paint schemes. Yeah, this this engine just looks good in anything. I'll be perfectly honest with you. And you did a uh, you you did one without uh, the elephant ears too. Yeah, they they got the elephant ears pretty early after their delivery, but we did um, do the eight forty one there, sort of based on some of the builders' photos, including the extra white trim and uh, most probably most notably is the coal tender on it. Uh, but yeah, that got that got changed really quickly too. Uh, Matt Z, did we have any questions on these? Yes. Um, just a second. Okay. Yes, uh, we did have quite a few questions on these. And first of all, Ryan, I just got to say the as delivered 841 is my favorite of this bunch. That one is just fantastic. I, I love that one. I've taken a, a quite a liking to that one, too. It, it makes me want to do a, a brass hybrid uh, FEF one or two one of these years. That, that was actually one of my questions. Was gonna, <laughs> that was uh, FEF one in the future. Those are wild. Mm-hmm. I really like those, too. Completely different than this. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, let's see. Another question is asking about the Mars light. Is that going to function as an emergency light, or is that going to be just a on-off Mars light? Uh, that'll have the emergency light functions like we did on the uh, the last round of these that we did. Sweet. And as a quick aside, I have the Milwaukee S3 with that, and wow. I mean, th- that engine by itself is fantastic, but mm-hmm. that emergency light's really cool. Uh, just a little plug for that engine. If, if, if nobody has that, please do yourself a favor and buy that. That, that you will not regret that. That is a great. You're engine. Talking about the S3. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's that's one of the that's one of my favorite engines in my collection. That thing is awesome. Yeah. So, shameless plug. I, rec- I, I recently just got one too. So, yep, I know what you mean. Okay. Let's see. Next. Uh, let's see. They're asking about the. Uh, uh, road number specific details like uh, different feed water heaters. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that going to be on this release? That will be on this release. Yes. Perfect. Okay. And then let's see here. Their uh, next question is asking about the, for the 2010 LCCA convention, mm-hmm. uh, the optional line of lines plates for the number 844. We did that the last time we ran the locomotives. Um, I wasn't going to do it again this time. Um, uh, it's maybe a possibility further down the road, uh, but for right now, for this run, we're, we're not going to repeat that. Okay. Uh, let's see here. And then also on the, the black 844, they're asking about, uh, will the cylinder drum heads be chrome on this one? Yeah, it does. Uh, it does have the, uh, the silver, uh, polished, uh, cylinder heads called out for it on the art there. We'll, we will do that. Okay. Uh, let's see. And it's asking about the, uh, where will the switches be? Will they, they be under the dome or on the bottom of the firebox? I would have to go back and double check the design on that. I want to say that we've moved them up to the dome, uh, but I would have to double check and confirm. I don't want okay. to say the wrong thing there. Okay. And, uh, one last one on this, that particular road number is, uh, the tires are, they going to be white walls or no white walls on that one? Uh, on the 844, uh, no white walls. And then all right, one last one, and then, then we're done with this. <laughs> is um, They're asking about the gray and yellow one. Uh, why did you guys decide to do number 844, not uh, 8444 for the road number? Uh, I had photos of them uh, in that scheme in both numbers, so we went with 844. Cool. All right, that's all I got for the, the it? FEFs. Yep. Eight eight hundred and forty four questions yes. later. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it was quite, this was a very right. popular engine. So yeah, yeah, it, it, it will be. It will be. If you, uh, folks love this engine for sure. So yeah, it's always a really glad to see it wrong with it. Yep. No. Okay, let's go ahead and move it along here. So hey, something to to pull to put behind your FEF. Sure, for yeah. sure. Uh, you know, when the big boy came out, everyone said, "Where are the ox tenders?" <laughs> So we thought we, you know, just spread it out a little bit to give people's budgets, you know, half a chance of uh, surviving the onslaught of these catalogs. Uh, and so we put the aux tenders here. We are using, you know, different tooling than we've used in the past. We're using the veranda tender tooling, which I just felt with the way it's been, these tenders have been rebuilt now. 
I, in my opinion, uh, for whatever that's worth, uh, this has a better resemblance to the overall shape of the, the tenders currently. And so that's why we changed it up a little bit. Uh, we also have these now available both with and without uh, sounds and legacy and all that. So if you're going to get a pair and run them together, uh, thought might, you know, you, it ran through my head at least that you might not want or need full legacy features and electrocouplers and all the bells and whistles in both of them. Uh, and again, another sort of nod to letting you get as much sound and features as you'd like uh, in your consist, because these typically do run together in a, in a pair now. Yeah, these are these are really nice. Very 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 unique looking as well. Are these the first ones that ha to have sound in them, or or have, has that been done before? That's been done before. Yeah, we've done okay. that in the past. I couldn't remember. I should it, know that, but <laughs> yeah, did, didn't the turbine have the super bass in its veranda tender? We did. Yeah, we did put that in there. Okay. Uh, okay. that's right. these will have, um, we don't put the steam chuffing sounds in this because you, you're so far back from the engine. It doesn't really quite work. Uh, but we do have uh, a variety of other sounds uh, that go into these tenders to make them fun. Yeah. These are cool. Uh, do we have any questions on these, Matt? Nope. Okay. All right. Let's move to page. So we're on page 25 and we have some, Really cool Union Pacific 18 inch uh, in the gray scheme. Yeah, again, just wanting to do something a little bit different than what we've done in uh, you know, recent catalogs. We've done a lot of the UP 21 inch passenger cars. Yeah, so I just wanted something to go back with you know the classic FEF power here. Uh, and we did the, uh, the two tone gray paint scheme. This, this didn't last very long on the UP. Uh, which makes it kind of interesting because you could go for a complete match consist or you could uh, mix these in with both the the earlier dark green and then the later uh, yellow that we're all familiar with uh, and be perfectly prototypical for most of the uh, most of the you know late 1940s 1950s time period uh, so you can get you wouldn't have to buy the whole seven car set here you could just pick a, a two pack or two and mix it in with your current consist and uh, get a pretty neat looking uh, UP train. I had a question on these. Um, I'm noticing the two packs. Uh, is there a, maybe a possibility for one of these two packs? Uh, maybe not, not this one, obviously, but uh, would you guys do like maybe like a head end two pack with like a baggage and a combine and then have a pack with like just two coaches? instead of having it separate like that? Yeah, we could do that down the road. Yeah. Um, okay. We've, we've sort of gone this route for a while, but I uh, thought this gave people the option to build a, you know, a longer coach train. Um, but certainly a uh, mm -hmm. head end baggage combine and then two coaches and then sleeper obs would, would work just as well. Cool. And then would you see these mixed in with the, like the lightweight cars? Like maybe not necessarily the excursion cars, but cars like that? Oh, sure. Yeah, so absolutely. Would... These got mixed in... Uh, you know, all over the place. You look at the uh, old photos of, you know, UP passenger trains, you see you know, just about anything mixed together. Uh, and even the, the excursion cars, you know, those didn't start out life as excursion cars. So you could still get away with uh, adding some of the older versions of those that we've done uh, in the trains as well. Sweet. Yeah. These are beautiful. I really like the colors. Yeah. Same with me. I, I really like that gray scheme from UP. Yeah, me too. Really, really tempted to get some of these, but yeah. <laughs> I, I say that on every, I say that on every page. So I have to. Right. <laughs> you could say it. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's go ahead and move on. Hey, legacy diesel. All right. All right. Some SD fifties. Yeah, these have been several years in the the making for us. This is all new tooling. Um, we've we've done some things in the past that we've called SD fifties, uh, but we've never really done a legit SD fifty, and so um, this this will remedy that as well as giving us a a platform to build off of over the next couple of years and catalog cycles with some uh, similar locomotives. So yeah, it's not doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize that I've got SD 60s and SD 60 M's and I's and all that good stuff planned for future 
future releases. But this does for this this size locomotive what the uh, SD40 and SD45 are in comparison to our older tooling for the SD40-2. Uh, much much finer detail, much more modular tooling, a uh, lot more road uh, specific lot. details on here as well. So you'll be able to get uh, a lot of uh, a lot of bang for your buck out of these locomotives. Super base units too. For and these. some super base, yes. Yeah. yeah, I think those have been received pretty well. Mm -hmm. The uh, the super base units, um, in obviously in the in the engine kind of format. Um, people tend to like that a lot. So definitely adds a lot more thump to all these. Not, not that they're not loud enough already. Uh, but you know, when you got that nice diesel bass like humming through and you kind of put your hand on the layout and you can like feel that like vibration. That's awesome. Yeah. More sound equals more fun. That's, that's just that's, the way, that's the right. way it works. Yep. Yeah. Unless you're in an apartment and your neighbor's downstairs, uh, <laughs> wondering what you're doing up there. <laughs> Now are these are these uh, original are these new tooling or are these XMTH or how these uh, are uh, with the exception of the trucks uh, everything you see there is new tooling. Yeah, we were very cool. Yeah. Do we have any questions on these, Matt? Yeah, we do. Uh, the quick aside: these are great. The uh, Norfolk Southern SD40E is fantastic. I, I've been wanting one of these for a while. Uh, specifically in the 40e rebuild mm -hmm. so these are really awesome i'd love the idea of the super base i might get that for a modern train that'd be really cool uh the question that's actually not on our list but i'm going to ask it because i don't see it called out on here is uh, these gonna have the kinematic pilots yes yes these have the kinematic pilots on them sweet okay let's start running them down here okay let's see asking about road specific details for like the rio grande version mm-hmm Asking about the um, gyro lights. This will have the gyro lights. Yep. Okay. And let's see. Uh, what are the gyro lights? It's uh, similar in concept to a Mars light, uh, where it sort of uh, sort of it, it wiggles back and forth. Now we'll mimic that with a strobing effect, uh, but uh, or you know a Mars effect. We won't actually have a miniaturized functional uh, floating gyro light in there. Uh, but you'll, you will have that effect on it, yes. Very cool. Cool. Uh, it's also asking, uh, will it always be on, or can you, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, let me start again. Three, two, one. And then it's also asking for the gyro light, will it always be on, or can you swap it between being solid and operating, along with them being able to be turned off? Um, off and operating, I'm sure you'll be able to do with the uh, legacy control. I'm not sure I'd have to, it may be a code revision to make that uh, switch between solid and, and oscillating on the, uh, I'm not sure that the current code we have for that, those lighting options allows that, uh, but it's certainly something I can take back to fill up at the office and, um, and then he can throw things at me too. Cool. And then one more, uh, this is on the SD40E, it's asking about, uh, will they have ditch lights like the prototypes? Yes, yes, those will have ditch lights. Sweet. Yeah, I am think that's going to be a winner for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, these, yeah. Are, these are really nice. Uh, mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments on the SD50s? Quick aside, too, that Conrail to support our troops. Oh, yeah, that one's great. <laughs> yeah, that one's one of my favorites for sure. All right, moving on. We're going to page 30 and 31, and we got some SD70 ACs. Yes, back again. Um, you know, these things are such a regular feature in the catalog, but uh, they keep selling well and, you know, railroads keep finding new paint schemes to put on them. So uh, it makes it easy to keep recataloging them. Uh, of course, you got the, the brand new Union Pacific image, which is really nice on these locomotives. And then it's now been uh, just over a decade since Norfolk Southern unveiled all 20 of their heritage units. And we started this with the UP units. Um, this year and I figured you know they'd been out of the catalog for a while and they were due for a rerun and we'd probably get decent orders but we got amazing orders on those uh, and with 20 of these locomotives coming out at the same time I know a lot of people were sort of scrambling to try and get what they could uh, but there were certainly a lot of people who sort of 
pick and chose. And over the last decade, you've probably seen some more of these track side and have some new favorites. So we figured it was time to start bringing these back. But rather than bring them all back in one or two catalogs, we're going to spread this out over the next four catalog cycles. So you'll have five at a time of the ES44s and the SD70s. So for those who are looking to complete their whole NS roster, you'll have that ability. Uh, and of course, no sooner did we put this stuff in the catalog than CSX started their own heritage program. So um, yeah, there's going to be a lot of heritage units rolling out of Lionel over the next couple of years. Yeah, really excited to hear that, that you're going to be spreading these out. Uh, I've, I've been wanting to fill in some of the gaps in my heritage fleet. So the, I was really excited to see these. Uh, I know a lot of other people are too. Yeah, good. So that, that confirms my theory. That makes me makes me feel good. We will uh, we will keep an eye on uh, on the shops and see if they make any tweaks or changes because the real ones are going through uh, the paint shops again now for an update and a refreshing too. So if we see anything that comes out a little bit a little bit different, uh, we'll try and capture that in these models before uh, before they go to production. Obviously, cool. I did have one question. Um, and I'm sure you've already gotten it, but the the CN uh, the New, uh, Jersey Central is that color going to be correct? It'll, yeah, we're going for all of these. We're going to use the same uh, the same color chips and callouts that we used the, in the first production run um, ten years ago, eleven years ago. Okay. Uh, it does look a little bit yellow in the in the catalog. I had that question come in uh, through talk to us uh, today to reassure somebody else as well um but cool. yeah it will have that correct cnj uh orange on there cool i had a couple questions from the discord and as a quick aside uh that union pacific looks fantastic i really the took a little getting used to when i first saw it but i kind of like the flag up on front it looks really cool yeah i i agree with you on that it 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 does definitely change things up. And I wasn't, you know, at first I thought, ah, but I like why they did it. And it, it's definitely grown on me too. I Seeing the flag, uh, you know, burnt or, or dirty as these things have, have aged, uh, it, you know, it didn't age well in that, that position. So I think this is a nice, nice improvement uh, and a nice gesture from the railroad. Was that the reason they did that? Was, was it because they were getting dirty? All nasty? That's the explanation that I had heard. Yes. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I like it up there on the nose. I think it looks cool. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Uh, quick aside on these, too, is um, on the earlier when I remember these were a glossy finish, like specifically the New York Central. I remember that mm -hmm. very glossy. These are going to be glossy or going to be like a matte finish? Uh, they, I think we'll probably do, if not a standard matte, probably a, a light gloss. I, I We won't go high gloss on these. Uh, those of you have talked to me before, you know I'm not a huge fan of locomotives that look like they're just dripping in in clear gloss um a little bit a little bit of a shine is nice but you know sometimes the gloss gets a little heavy and it gets to be a bit much uh, and that, that starts to obscure the details and things like that so uh we will we will give them a nice nice fresh out of the shop look for sure uh but they won't be done up in uh high shine gotcha Okay, let's see. What do we have here? I got, I got a general diesel question. This kind of relates to something I was thinking about is you guys recently revised the sound file for this. The extended startup is fantastic. Mm -hmm. I really like it. It's great. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good point. You guys did a great job with that. And the question is asking about, uh, a, I guess, an extended, extended startup, if, if you want to be like that. <laughs> says, an extended, uh, extended startup. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, you know. Uh, Are they getting coffee or something? And then they're heading, they're walking out? <laughs> their alarm clock going off, they're getting coffee. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, um, it's asking, is it possible to have an extended startup sequence with a dry start of the prime mover to expand? Uh, expel water from the cylinders, a closing of all cylinder cocks, priming, and then start. Um, anything, well, I suppose anything's possible. Uh, the, the biggest question would be from, you know, that, and I, I don't have the answer to it, but the, the biggest question that pops in my mind is you know, as you start to get into file size on these things uh, and the capacity of uh, uh, the electronics, uh, from a recording standpoint, I don't think it would be much of an issue. And uh, we've been getting Tracy, our audio engineer, out on the road a lot more. 
uh, and he'll be uh, making a trip this fall up to do some recording. So um, it's certainly the type of thing we could record and see what we could work in. Um, we also tend to try and compress some things over real life too, just because well, most people don't want to wait three minutes every time uh, they, they start their train up before they can play with it. Um, but certainly things like that or uh, new crew talk and new options are, are things that we're always looking out for. Uh, we've added some new things to our, our steam locomotive dialogue since we recorded up at, at Strasburg for 90. So we've changed some of our opening uh, sequences there with that. Um, you know, it's uh, there's always going to be some compromise from the real life to the toy trains, but uh, anywhere where we can find to add new, new, neat little things in there, we'll keep looking for it. Sweet. Uh, as quick aside with the steam locomotive, the train line brakeman, the extended startup, that is awesome. I really like that a lot too. The class A was a home run with that. And then when I heard it on some of these other ones, I'm like, oh yeah, this is great. Yeah, I, I would say overall, the, I mean, over the last few years, the crew talk sounds have gotten a lot better. They've gotten a lot, uh, I call them a lot grittier, mm -hmm. where you've got a lot of more radio static and cool stuff like that. And it's it's been really, really cool to see that happen. All right. Any more questions on the ST-70s? Yeah, I got one more. Okay. Um, and it's asking about the Union Pacific version having the correct rear end uh, with the dual sand filler hatches. And will there, will there be a accurate K5 LA horn sound file in these? Uh, I believe we do have a pretty good K5 LA horn file uh, that we'll be using. Um, of course, you have five different horns. So we'll put that in there as one of them and then you know, whatever uh, for the other four. Uh, as far as the rear end on the UP, I've, I've tried to match up from, as best I could from prototype photos. We have three different uh, rear end toolings for the SD70. Uh, so I'm not, I don't have anything new in store for it. If they've changed them since uh, delivery, I, to my knowledge, they hadn't, um, but we will take a look at that. I did try and match that up when we did the, uh, did the art on these to get the details right there. Got to get that SD70 booty right. That's right. So, <laughs> so I wanted to ask, uh, do, do these have, have, has the, have the ST70s been upgraded with the, uh, the, uh, the pilots yet with the uh, kinematic pilots? Uh, no, I believe these are the ones that still have just the, the swinging pilot. The ES44 has the kinematic and this has just the, the normal swinging pilot. Okay, cool. Cool. I'm pretty I know, it's, I know it, seems, it seems like you've been kind of systematically upgrading mm -hmm. Over the years, I didn't. I didn't know if the ST seventy had its turn yet or not. So, yeah. and the uh, the minimum of curve, the O thirty six, that is still yes, yeah, and that's that's how I know these don't have the uh, the kinematic on them. Yeah, that's the biggest okay. drawbar to the kinematic, which is really you could definitely do tighter than O fifty four with these. Uh, it all depends on what you have coupled to it. Um, yeah, and so we rate them a little higher because if you've got light light rolling stock or rigid couplers behind it, they tend not to like that that tight curve with the kinematic. But if you're running, um, you know, normal scale sized rolling stock with some decent weight and couplers, then, you know, we've run them around 042, I believe, without any, any troubles with, with some uh, things coupled to them. And the engines themselves certainly will do 036, uh, but just, just the engine. Gotcha. Okay. Let's go ahead and move it along here. We got some GP30s. Always a fun one. Uh, and some, some fun different uh, road name variations and details on here as well, including train phone for the Pensy guys and the uh, New York Central's non-dynamic brake uh, versions, which is always a little bit weird on a Jeep 30 since that's kind of its big spotting feature. I like that Santa Fe. And that blue and yellow, that's that's it. Yeah, we haven't that's done a, a, a lot of the earlier Santa Fe uh, uh, freight schemes, so I'm starting to get more into yep. that and do a few more of those. Yeah, these all look fantastic. I'm having a real hard time narrowing down uh, which ones to get because uh, they, they all look great. I love that Conrail, that patch job on the, that, that Conrail. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so you've got two two Conrail patches, one X Redding, uh, and one uh, X Penn Central, originally New York Central. So obviously there'd be a few uh, detail differences there as well. Yeah. Oh, they all look great. Yep. Yeah. 
These are all really cool. I love the Pensy with the radio antenna. I, I'm a Pensy guy, so you know, gotta have that. Uh, that one's really cool. Um, let's see here. Uh, uh, there may be any plans to do Super Bass for one of these. I, I, I don't see that in the. Uh, we could certainly do it down the road. Um, I, I didn't this time. At, at some point, you get so much stuff in the catalog that you just start to back off um because the creative department wants to kill you um <laughs> <we're>, <laughs> so uh yeah uh just just to avoid too many many skews in in one shot i didn't put any super bass jeep 30s uh but down the road it's certainly an option we could look at on these okay if we cool. can fit it in a in an f7b unit we can fit it in a jeep 30 oh sure okay let's see here i got two questions for you on these uh, the question is asking specifically about the uh, Wisconsin Central. Mm -hmm. and it's asking about the, will it be modeled without the dynamic brakes as the prototype? Uh, I was not aware that that unit did not have dynamics. Um, so I'll have to go back and double check that. Um, as far as I knew, that that locomotive still had dynamics. Uh, so I'll double check to make sure I'm right on that one, though. Okay. And uh, one more is asking about, and I'm not sure what they're referring to on this, but I'll ask it anyway. It's asking about the frame offset issue. Will it be corrected? Um, uh, with the pilots. Uh, yes, okay. that's something we will definitely look at in the production on these, where the, the steps sat out a little bit uh, further forward than they uh, they should to, to match up with the, uh, the locomotive. I'm, I am aware of that issue, uh, and it's something okay. that we will correct uh, in, in production for sure. Cool. All right. That's all I got for these. One thing I noticed is some of them have snow plows and some don't. Mm -hmm. Is the snow plow uh, like one of the detachable components or is that like a specific road name detail? It's a road name specific detail. So if, if the okay. uh, if the railroad has it, then it would it will be on there in the model. Um, they are removable uh, if you you know, if you want to get in there and do it. Um, on okay. your own but we won't it won't be something that we just include that you can then put on you know whether or not the, the railroad had it or not gotcha okay yeah thanks for that clarification yeah, no problem. okay any other questions or comments on our gp30s okay let's keep moving along we're on page 34 and 35 and um some really awesome f7s here some some West Coast representation here yeah. in the catalog. Yeah, you know, I didn't realize it until I saw the whole the whole catalog spread and went, man, this is like BNSF Heritage F unit uh, uh, catalog edition. But it, it's, it totally is. <laughs> that that uh, was not how I, I envisioned the things coming together, but uh, that that's what we kind of ended up with. So, um, yeah, but they they all look nice uh, paired up around each other, so it, it worked out well. Yeah, those blue bonnets are fantastic. Oh yeah, I when I saw those, I was like, okay, that's on the definite <laughs> list. And it's so funny because I just reviewed the Menards blue bonnets not too long ago. And when I reviewed those, I was like, man, I hope why. <laughs> yeah, and I was super stoked to see these blue bonnets. So that was a that immediately went to the must have list. So I was, I was super happy about that. ABBA, that's the only way to go. Got to go ABBA. Yeah, you gotta get the full set. Yep. Because both A's are powered too, right? Yeah. So yeah, the both A's are powered. Yeah. Both have smoke and lights. Uh, one has sound. One does not. And then with the B units, you have one that's powered and one that's uh, with no sound, and one that is not powered with the super bass. So if you get the whole set of them, you've got three powered units, two sound units, and, and including one of those with the super bass, and uh, it's plenty loud. For, for sure. Well, and 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 all four units will smoke. All four too, will smoke. So yeah. yeah. Plenty it, of smoke. It's, it's it's a show. Mm -hmm. It's plenty of sound. Plenty of power. Uh, plenty of smoke. Yeah, tons of pulling power. I just, I'm in the middle of reviewing right now the uh, Marine Corps ABBA set. And uh, that sucker, the ABBA has just over four pounds of pulling power, which is like Jeez. 50 to 60 cars <laughs> at a pull. <laughs> it's crazy. That's awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, if you want pulling power in a smoke show and a sound show, this is it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think I, all of these are are fantastic. I mean, great great color schemes. Um, they all look really really good. Does that Frisco have a beacon on it? It does. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I meant to ask. Uh, 
on the on the Frisco and I think the Rock Island ones. What are those? It looks like there's things coming up from the smokestacks. Uh, what are those? Uh, are they're they, probably are they? the spark arresters on the smokestacks. Okay. Okay. Hang on, let me think, let me look in the that. catalog because my image on my computer screen is pretty small. But uh, yes, there there's a like a spark arrestor on the the top of the smokestack. It's that's cool. It's, I've I've never seen those mm-hmm. before. And then they got the little on the Rock Island. They got the little antenna mm-hmm. on there. That's cool. Nice. Uh, some nice road name specific details there. Yeah, the Rock Island and the BNM in these later paint schemes. Uh, you know, you're getting in that years where they you might get a match set of F of F units, but you didn't have a you know a really matched set of F units. They were sort of all over the place in deco. So, um, kind of fun to have those those sorts of concepts. Was there ever a chance? Um, I, I don't I don't really know my uh, Rock Island history, but was there ever a uh, set of the uh, all blue uh, Rock Island? I don't. Th- now I could be wrong on this, and I'll have to start looking through some books here. Um, I don't know that any of the F units got painted in the the rock blue scheme. I think they were all off the roster by then. Um, yeah, I think that was the rock blue was I think way after F yeah. sevens. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I don't have any Discord questions on this one, but I did have one that I I was thinking of, and um, the. 2017 round of these uh you had both a's with sound and then a separate b with sound mm-hmm. uh, is there a, i know it's a lot of sound but is, is there a is there a chance that we could see both a's with sound at some point uh it's it's possibility we we started dialing it back because of just what you said it was a lot of sound uh and to the point where it was uh becoming a bit much in the in our offices just testing them and we thought you know we, we may have pushed pushed the envelope beyond where it needs to go here, um, but uh, yeah, it's certainly a, a you know potentially an option down the road. Cool. All right, that's all I got for these. All right. Any other questions or comments here? Okay. Well, of course, uh, here's something really, really cool. I think that a lot of people are excited for. Yeah, this has been one of our most requested passenger trains since we started with the 21-inch passenger cars. And uh, now that we have a, well, it may not be the exact uh, round-end observation or RPO for the train, at least got me a lot closer. Uh, I wasn't going to have to try and disgrace the Empire Builder with Tower View on the end of this or something. Uh, So we've got a a great looking Empire Builder consist and uh, I, I expect this one to do very well. Yeah, this set is absolutely beautiful. This is a big set. <laughs> if, you buy, if you buy all those pieces, holy moly! Yeah, we did the uh, we 12? did the full length dome yeah. car separately. Uh, those came a couple years, maybe a year uh, or two after the uh, the train itself was was relaunched. Uh, so if you wanted to, to span a couple different generations of the train, you could do that. Um, in peak season, though, the, the the builder was uh, easily a, a 14 car train. I think sometimes longer, uh, you know, four or five F units on the front. So you know, there's no reason not to go big on this. Yep. Hey, go big or go home, <laughs> right? Uh, do we have any questions on this, Matt? Mm-mm. Okay. Uh, this the yeah this set is just unreal um gonna love to see this when it comes in and seeing an action did uh anyone else have any questions or comments on this uh nope okay move it along 40 and 41 we had some elko s2s a lot of colorful road name options on these this time uh, i tried to mix it up a bit and get away from just uh all railroads and made some some different private owners and uh, and things like that in here too. Uh, you know, you've got some of your plain, you know, more ordinary black ones, but uh, the SART, the ADM, even the NASA unit really gets you a nice splash of color for those looking for something a little different. Yeah, I definitely like these. It's uh, I think I've zeroed in on the NASA version, but that ADM one is really, really sharp looking too. 
And these have the fixed pilots, right? Yes, these all have fixed pilots. That's right, yeah. And um, we're also hoping, as we've, I've been working with uh, with some folks, we're hoping to maybe get some new sound recordings here before these get produced as well. So we'll update our sound files for these locomotives. Should be oh, quite cool. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, I like that NASA one as well. Yeah, these are all really, really cool. The Staten Island Rapid Transit is really nice. The uh, the uh, little thing on the cab there is kind of cool. The uh, M logo, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> uh, well, I'm gonna. Th- this is a striker question, but um, one of the general questions asking is um, uh, plans to reissue some of the great older toolings for modern modern modelers. Is the question asking about the HHP8 superliners and the uh, my favorite the legacy subways. <laughs> uh, the superliners, I don't believe we have the tooling for any longer. Um, I, I, it has not surfaced. Uh, the HHP8 certainly a possibility, um, and the uh, the subways also certainly a possibility. Um, you know, I always get asked for new subways from the subway guys, but I think we've gone long enough now where even the the old ones would be welcomed back again. Uh, they're sort of the equivalent of the Acela, but without the mass appeal of the Acela from a uh, production and engineering and uh, sales standpoint. So uh, they haven't been really high on my priority list, uh, but, but they are definitely doable again. Uh, it would require a, a complete overhaul, though, in terms of uh, their internal design for the electronics and everything else. Yeah, I'd love to see some subway stuff. While we're on the topic, I... Um... The uh, I think it was in 2006 you guys did these uh, these BB1 electrics. Mm-hmm. Do you still have those or or we do and and we've kicked that one around a little bit as well. Um, it's a it's a format and size issue again. Um, I want to try and figure out a way to where we could uh, could do that using uh, to where you could be able to separate them and do it run them as a as a single B, uh, mm-hmm. but. Uh, doing that and, and getting it with and without the sounds and all that right now, the only way Dave can figure out how to make it work is if the two units are tethered. And I just, I don't want right. to do that. <laughs> uh, I, yeah. I just got one of the, I bought one, one of the ones from 2007, not too long, mm-hmm. 2006, not too long ago. And they're, they're, they're awesome. I love those things. And it'd be great to see those again. Yeah. yeah those are, those are really nice. Um, uh, so you're going on the bees. Uh, how about a? Um, I don't even know where the tooling is for this anymore. The uh, MTH DD1. Uh, that's a really cool set. It is. We did not get the tooling for that. I have no oh, idea no. where that might be. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. All the MTH electrics, I don't know where they're at, but they made some really cool ones. And I have a set of DD1s. I love them. Oh, yeah. I need a set of, yeah. I need a set of rats, though. <laughs> Okay, uh, I did have one Discord question on the S2, and I believe it was on the Keen Pacific version. Okay. And he was asking about the dual pile headlight and where will the horn will the horn be mounted on top of the cab? Um, I believe we have that shown with a horn on top of the cab. Um, and this was sort of its earlier as delivered version, so it would be uh, the single headlight on these, if I'm not mistaken. Um and although I'm looking in the catalog, it's hard to say in the catalog. I think this one may actually have the corn tucked under the cab roof uh, on this. There's some we have mounted above and some we have mounted below. It all depended on the prototype photos that I could find. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. All right. Page 42 and 43. So we're, we're getting into the uh, the legacy sets here. Uh, Lehigh gorge scenic railway legacy set this this is incredible like i love those blue cars those are great yeah, i always thought this was a, a an attractive uh, paint scheme for sure it's a it's a neat operation and a beautiful uh beautiful trip if you ever have the chance to take it uh highly recommend it and um uh, I don't think they're using the the blue SD50 as power right now, um, but uh, it was it was on the train for a good number of years. Um, and if you have a, a four and a quarter, of course, it's a nice uh, nice complement to that too. Uh, sometimes they would put this one as protect power on some of the excursions when uh, they were running running that locomotive. So 
uh, it would be a neat, neat one to grab. Uh, this is another one where we're hoping to perhaps get some more uh, audio files and things uh, working with them right now. Uh, can't promise anything, but we're trying to get some stuff set up. Okay. Uh, any questions on this one, Matt? Mm-mm. Okay. Uh, any other questions or comments on this set? Nope. Want to support your favorite O-Scale podcast and rock some awesome merch? Well, now you can. We've teamed up with Redbubble.com and have come up with a great selection of gear that you can get right now. They have everything from shirts, hoodies, stickers, mugs, bags, you name it. Heck, you could even get a wall clock with us on it. All this great stuff and more at Redbubble.com. Links are down in the show notes, so grab yourself some gear and rock some awesome podcast merch. Page uh, 44, 45, we have two sets in here. We have uh, start at the top here. We got Western Pacific Feather River Freight Set. Yeah, just a, a fun one with uh, two of the last, uh, you know, the Western Pacific had four F units that survived. Uh, this is two of the four uh, in that, that last uh, paint scheme. Uh, and then four just great uh, classic uh Western Pacific liveries, uh, nice, bright, colorful set here. Um, we've got the freight sounds box car, uh, the gondola with the big feather, the bicentennial trailer. Uh, so, I, you know, for, for our Western modelers, I want at least one nice set in there for, for those guys. And, uh, we, you know, we've, we've had a lot of, uh, a lot of success with some recent, recent Western Pacific things. So you know, might, might see some more, uh, feather river route stuff coming in the catalog down the road. Excellent. And then we have this um, M1 Middle Division Manifest Legacy set. Of course, got to do an M1 set. Uh, and again, like we did with the Cumberland Valley set, we tried to pick uh, the, the freight cars are all uh, fictitious color schemes, but they're all made for um, actual industries that the, the Pennsylvania served uh, along the Middle Division. So we wanted to give it that sort of local flair. And uh, that's that's what you have here. I like that both these sets have like Freight Sounds boxcars mm -hmm. too. That's cool. It gives them a really yeah. nice premium feel to them. Well, these sets come in like a um, a nice you know box with a cool picture on it. And yes, everything. yes. All the all the legacy sets will have that nice nice gift box. Cool, cool. Yeah. Uh, do we have any questions on this, Matt? Uh, I just have one on the middle division set, and it was asking. Um, that it'll come with the six wheel 054 tender with the train phone antenna, correct? Correct. That's its picture. Okay. Yes. Cool. Uh, that's all I had for that. I was just curious though on the caboose. Um, that's not going to be one of the vision line cabooses, is it? Uh, no, this one's just going to have the regular uh, caboose. I haven't retooled the N5 yet for the to pack all the electronics in there. Okay. Um, quickly, while we're on the topic, uh, the uh, NA's. Uh, are those are in production, correct? Uh, they're not quite, quite in production yet. Uh, we're in the tooling process right now to make the uh, make the, some revisions on those and uh, get them in production. I think they'll probably be in production within the next month or so. What are you talking about? Which 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 ones? The uh, the, the N8. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Cool. I'm just curious awesome. on those because I'm I'm looking forward to those. Those gonna be cool. All right, let's. That's all. Let's, uh, all right, let's keep moving along here. Uh, got some uh, board page forty six, forty seven. We got some really interesting passenger cars. The American Orient Express. I'm super stoked about these. Yeah, this is a this is a neat one. Um, I think maybe MTH has done a set of these cars quite some time ago. Uh, the train's been gone for a few years now, but it was always always popular. Uh, I think I got to see it once in uh, in actuality in my younger years. Uh, of course, the nice thing about this, someone said, well, there's no matching power. Well, it usually ran behind Amtrak F40s or P40s. Uh, they they had a couple of GP40s, I think, for a while, but uh, they usually just pulled power on this. Uh, so you can run it behind almost anything you want. Uh, I've also had somebody ask me if we could do a matching steam locomotive for it, which... Who knows down the road, um, but uh, just the you know sort of the idea of a a cruise ship on on rails uh, concept. And the other thing I like about this is no matter what your interests are in, you know where you model or what what 
you know, prototype you may follow. This traveled all over the country. So there's, you can make the excuse to put this on, on your layout, no matter where, where you are. Yeah. I, uh, these, when I saw these, they jumped on the, uh, the yes list. Uh, I put all, I ordered all of them. So <laughs> can't wait till these come out. It's going to be fun to run. Awesome. These are pretty cool. Any other questions or comments on these? M Matt, did we have any questions on this? Uh, not on these, but we did have some on the RPO cars, which I think is the okay. next page. Okay. Uh, yep, I'll move to the next page. All right, so we got some, yeah, RPO cars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as we were looking, as I was looking through and pulling prototypes and things for the catalog, you know, a couple of these old uh, RPOs that were uh, downgraded into maintenance of way service caught my attention. I said, you know, we've got some tooling that's pretty close to that right now. Uh, there's not really necessarily anything that would go with them specifically in the catalog, uh, but it, you know, we all have our rec trains and uh, things of that nature. So this is a great piece to add in there. Uh, we're not, we're, we're keeping this sort of simple because these were in rec service. So you, you're not going to have uh, a ton of interior details or lighting on these. Uh, just a, a basic car that was, you know, in tool car service at this point. Uh, but they would look great sitting on the siding or in, in your consist with your, uh, your TMCC crane or uh, whatever, whatever else you may uh, have that you want to put with these. All right. The uh, two questions, uh, one question from me. Um, you said TMCC rec crane. Is there a, is there a chance to bring those back? <laughs> There's uh, certainly a chance. It's something that we've uh, we have talked about. Um, the factories they are they are really a bear to build. So getting them built uh, well and right uh, is quite the challenge. Uh, I'm not quite ready to uh, re-release re those yet, uh, but it is something that we've we've talked about. Okay, cool. And uh, the question I have from the Discord is. Uh, Will the Union Pacific RPO have opening doors? Uh, no, these do not have opening doors. Okay, cool. All right, on the next page, we got some 18-inch training cards. Mm -hmm. So this is a neat one. Now, the, the UP at the top there is 21-inch because uh, it just matches the... Uh, the the prototype a little bit better that's where our tooling matched up uh but 18 or 21 all of these cars have the same internal features uh in terms of electronics and these will function like the hobo box cars uh, that we've done recently where when it's in motion in the train you'll have your normal freight sounds when you spot it on the on a siding uh obviously you won't have the hobo camp but you'll have uh the the workers coming into their their classroom setting uh for their day of instruction or, or testing and so forth. Uh, the railroads found it in most cases cheaper to send the instructor and classroom around the railroad to train and retrain and recertify employees uh, than to bring employees um, you know, out of their home base to send them to a central school. Uh, so you found cars like this um, on most of the major railroads, uh, usually converted from older passenger equipment uh, and in a variety of uh, configurations. Um, neat little one of those neat little sub chapters of railroad history that uh, I thought would make a fun addition to to people's layouts uh, and give you something that's as much fun to have in the train as you know just parked in the yard. Yeah, uh, that that Great Northern one is that is that based on a prototype or is that just no? That is oh. based on a prototype. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that is so neat mm -hmm. looking. Yeah, all the cars that you see in here are, uh, are based on prototype photos. Very cool. The decoration yeah, on that Great Northern, Northern is intense, but it's really cool. Yeah, I'm definitely getting the Great Northern one. That just <laughs> got flames all over it. I can't say no to it. That's just too cool. It's pretty hot looking. <laughs> oh, boy. It's hot. <laughs> all right. I have a singular wit, I guess. Uh, <laughs> uh, just to be clear, uh, all of these, it's the same exact sound set. Yes, we'll correct? use the same sound set for all. Okay, there's no, nothing specific mm -hmm. to any kind of rail. Correct. Okay. Um, all right. With these, uh, uh, the near central version, I'm curious on, uh, were these used like as passenger cars in a train or were these just separate? No, these would be, uh, these would get moved in pretty much whatever train was uh, able to take them. 
Now, oftentimes the instructor would uh, would stay with the car uh, as well, so he would travel. He usually typically would have a room at the end of uh, end of the car. Um, they would move in passenger trains. They would move in freight trains. It uh, just depended on where they were going and how the railroad wanted to get them there. Uh, and then they would be tied up um, in a yard or near a station, someplace uh, you know near a crew point, uh, wherever was convenient for the railroad. Sweet. So I have the uh, 20th Century Limited from 2004. Mm-hmm. That those heavyweight cars, and this would be great for that. So I'll, I'll have to grab it for that. All right, let's keep it moving. And we got some PS5 gondolas. Yeah, the PS5s are back again. Uh, we have not done the uh, Coke canister cars in quite a while. So it was fun to bring those back again. And of course, we've got a couple of prototypical paint schemes in here and some that are just crazy out there fun. Uh, but we've, we have a lot of requests for more Area 51 things. Uh, you know, U.S. Army, of course, and the graffiti cars are always popular. So we wanted to bring some of those back as well. All right. We won't spend too much time on these. Uh, keep it moving here. Unless somebody has like anything you want to bring up, I'll just kind of keep moving through the through the rolling stock here um double sheet box cars it's like really nice yeah again a, a nice uh nice standard car we've got one of the uh friendship train cars back here we've had a lot of requests to do some more of those it's been uh, a couple catalog cycles since we uh, first introduced that that train series um so that was a, a fun one to bring in here as well all right these patriot sounds box cars i think people are curious as to what are Patriot sounds? So what we're going to do here, um, you know, everyone's got your freight sounds box cars by now. Uh, so I like to look for ways to uh, make things a little bit fresh and keep things new and interesting. And so these will have that same same concept, same operation, but instead of the the normal clickety clack cadence, it will be done in more of a drum beat uh, military march style cadence. So as you have this rolling along in your in your train, it'll uh, it'll be a little bit different sounding than the uh, the freight sounds box cars you already have, and be kind of a cool little salute to the the different branches of the armed services. I really like these. Are those the Union Pacifics? Are those? similar to the one that's in the superset, the big boy superset? Yes, correct. So the, the one in the superset starts off the series. Uh, there will be about uh, 25, 27, something like that of these all together, uh, all based on uh, World War II era poster art that the Union Pacific put out. Uh, so each car has a unique poster on one side, and then the other side of the car says, uh, serving all our best uh, in place of serves all the West. Uh, and, you know, sort of picking up on typical UP styling. Uh, so you'll see the, the two sounds cars here. Um, we had the, the one in the big boy super set was a freight sounds cars with the typical freight sounds. Uh, there'll be at least one more sound car coming in volume one. Uh, and then if you, when we turn to the next page, you'll see the first uh, three or four, yeah, three, uh, uh, three packs that we have here. And these are using the old Weaver tooling. Um, Still has a lot of separately applied details, not quite as much as our scale cars, uh, but it allowed us to uh, bring the price down on these a little bit. Because when you start talking about, you know, 25 plus car trains, uh, A, you, you certainly don't want all of them to be Freight Sounds cars. Uh, and B, if there's if we can uh, reduce a couple dollars off each car to help, help people who want to get the whole series, why not go for it? So uh, this is about half of the overall train, and then you'll see a, a similar size spread in volume one. Uh, along with a special caboose to to tie it all together too. So uh, I think it'll be a spectacular train for people who like the uh, World War II era cars and and poster art and whatnot. Uh, It'll be a really fun one uh, with the idea being that you get the the three packs of standard cars and then spread out your sound equipped cars evenly throughout the train uh, for the the right sound uh, volume and effect. Very cool. I was thinking of getting the U.S. Marines Patriot Sounds car to go with the Marine Corps ABBA set that I got. But then I, that Air Force, is that going to be the same blue that the, uh, the Marine Corps set has, or is that a different blue? Uh, it, it'll be a very close blue. Uh, we tried to tie the, um, the uh, set that we did to the pretty close to the original uh, 
you know, Lionel version. Uh, but the, right. it's not far off. I think it would be a, a pretty neat match in there as well. Cool. All right. Uh, let's see. Page 35. I'm sorry. Correct that. Page 55. Some uh, two bay hoppers. Yeah. So again, some more of the uh, Weaver tooling coming back again. Um, a, a little more affordably priced. And then these hoppers will be available as a single car or in, th- in two, three packs uh, with three unique and, and non-sequential numbers. So if you're building coal trains, you know, a lot of people want, you know, more than one car, you want multiples. Uh, this gets you multiple multiple road name num- uh, road number options. If you just want one to sprinkle in there as a different looking uh, hopper car, then you can do that as well. Okay. Uh, let's see, some covered hoppers, PS2CD covered hoppers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, again, for the most part, available as a single car or a three-pack uh, with different numbers. Then we've got the two uh, co-op three-packs with those brightly colored cars that were all the rage in the, um, uh, I guess, late 1960s uh, into the 1980s. You saw a lot of these out on the rails. Uh, really cool uh, color schemes. And so I thought, why not? Let's, uh, let's do a couple of those and uh, give people some variety. Yeah, I really like those. I, I decided to order both of those uh, green, those co-op three packs because they look so they're nice and colorful. Are these, now these are X Weaver as well. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now with the X Weaver, are 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 they being made in China now, or are they are you still going to make them here? Or these will be uh, produced in uh, Vietnam, actually. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. That seems to be where all the rolling stock is, is made. A lot of it's made nowadays. We've moved uh, a fair amount of our rolling stock there. We have not moved uh, locomotives or anything more complicated than that That there at this point. Well, next page here. So we got some single sheath box cars yep. and we have some standard double O box cars on page 59. Yeah. So again, uh, shingle sh- single sheaths are uh, weaver tooling. And then the uh, the standard O cars, of course, are old Lionel standard O box cars uh, for those who are looking for uh, some nice freight cars that are generally generally speaking scale and proportion, um, but not not nearly as heavily detailed as uh, really even some of the the Lion scale or, or Weaver cars uh, in the lineup, uh, but uh, still good freight train fillers for sure. Yep. All right, and. Got some John Deere. Yeah, uh, Megan's been having all the fun, and Corey in the the John Deere licensing. So we've started to do some new uh, scale offerings here, and uh, this time around we've got some forty uh, foot flat cars loaded with the the diecast trailer loads. We did one with a John Deere uh, flat for the the true John Deere fan and collector, and then three different road names for the person who you know wants a prototypical, more prototypical looking flat car. Uh, We've got the gondola with uh, fertilizer canisters here in this case instead of Coke. Uh, and then my personal favorite is actually the uh, the double sheath boxcar uh, with that great early advertising on there. I think this crosses over a lot of uh, a lot of genres from the Billboard Reefer fans to John Deere fans. Uh, it's just a really good looking piece of rolling stock. Uh, so I really like the way that one turned out. Enjoying this week's topic? You can join in on the conversation too on our community Discord server. We have a lot of different discussion channels ranging from showing off your collection, discussing the latest and greatest in the industry, a buy and sell forum, and even a voice channel you can hop on call and talk trains with us late into the night. We're a little over 300 strong and we'll love to have you join us too. Check out the invite link to our community Discord down in the show notes, read and acknowledge the rules, and introduce yourself and start chatting. We have a great team of moderators who make sure all are welcomed and respected. So what are you waiting for? Come on down and join us in on the fun. And let's talk some trains. This is probably where you get to stop listening to me drone on and uh, listen to two talented people actually talk for a little bit. (laughs) All right, Megan and Corey, this is your wheelhouse, right? You're up. (laughs) All right. Uh... I'll say Berkshires or Berkshires. I don't want to, I don't want to insult anybody or make anybody trigger anybody, but Berkshires. How cool is this? Finally doing the um, 726 Berks as LC 2.0 with all the fun LC 2.0 features. 
Um, you have four different road names here. Uh, my favorite being the American Railroad, just because of the bright blue tender there. Um, these here do are keep accurate to the original. Uh, the jeweled markers on these do not light. Um, we felt that it was more appropriate to keep the jewels in these rather than add that feature in um, and keeping with the, the post-war theming on these. But I'm really excited to be bringing these back as LC2 for the first time. These are really cool. I actually have the scale version of the American Railroads in Legacy. And uh, it's just that color scheme just looks so great uh, on these Berkshires for sure. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're really very like sharp, um, traditional locomotives, um, you know, for for those who have uh, smaller layouts uh, but want still want lots of features, the um, 726 Berks are going to be wonderful additions to their layouts. I think it's been really nice w watching these uh, LC2 sort of like modern versions of post-war classics. Um it's been a lot of fun. I've been, I've been, I've gotten a few of those. I've been reviewing them and writing about them. And it's, 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 it's been a lot of fun looking at them just because there's, it's so much of a callback to the, to the classics, but then you've got all this new technology inside. So it's kind of a, kind of a win-win situation uh, where you've got a classic with, with modern technology inside. So uh, really nice to see these two. Yeah, absolutely. And with so many different ways to run them, um, really ease of use for people just starting out as well. Yep. Yeah, it's got the five uh, five whistles, five bells. It's got the uh, the, uh, the full fledged crew talk, and uh, does this have the same kind of um, crew talk and uh, that a lot of the legacy ones have, where it's the, if it's a steam engine, it's kind of like steam specific. Yeah, they do have some additional crew talk features. It's not quite as much as you would get out of a legacy locomotive, but still more than you would get in a starter set. Yep, absolutely. All right, uh, next page 69, we got some Jeeps. Yeah, moving on to the GP7s. What's really cool about these is we are utilizing newly acquired tooling um, to update to a more detailed body shell. Um, so while we have done GP7s in the past, they are definitely going to be more detailed. Um, we're hitting multiple regions here uh, with the Denver and Rio Grande, uh, the North Carolina Short Line um, with Aberdeen and Rockfish with the John Blue, Mo John Blue markings on the cab front. Um, one of my favorite ones just because I love the blue and orange on that locomotive. We also have the Central Railroad of New Jersey um, for the Northeast and the Rock Island with a bold, colorful paint scheme. Yeah, are these scale? Because they, they look pretty scale. And these are previous uh, MTH tooling, again, with the, the new uh, oh, okay. uh, new frame here. Okay, yeah, so they are scale then. Oh, like a nice. Is it like a Rail King scale? Is that what it was before? Or was it Premier from MTH? Oh, I believe it was Rail King. Cool. Yeah, these are great. That, that Aberdeen and Rockfish looks awesome. Yeah, it is definitely my favorite. Um, that blue is going to be just stunning. Aberdeen that's like the new the new hotness now right so wasn't there a wasn't there a scale Aberdeen set from a couple catalogs ago that had those like <laughs> yeah. wicked that wicked color scheme it was really cool yeah yeah that's what I thought yeah I think, did, did you get that one Eric I did I did all right Matt did we have any questions on either of these Berkshires or the Jeeps no we did not but that uh cnj that one's really cool i, I really like these one. when i saw these i'm like oh man these are i wasn't sure what to expect really but uh when i saw that you know the picture i'm like man these are xmth these are look great i'm really excited for these i mean scale jeep that goes through 031 i mean can't ask for anything better than that yeah, so. i'll take it all day long yep now we just need a pennsylvania with a radio antenna <laughs> All right, uh, got a great Northern 280 Alliance you've set. Yeah, we really wanted to continue utilizing the newly acquired tooling we had and wanted to throw in another 280 um, following up with the one that we had in C1. Um, this is the great Northern 280. And uh, for this one, what's really cool is that we decided to tool a new hopper load. Um, so throwing in the theme for Pacific Northwest by imagining types of goods that um, this locomotive would have hauled, we decided to do a potato sack load, um, something fun and new to keep things fresh for us. And uh, this load can then be utilized in other types of hoppers as well. 
we also have the additional Great Northern flat car with the bulkheads. Again, just another additional piece of rolling stock to add to your freight set for people who want to expand upon what they just purchased. Yeah, this set's really cool. And yeah, and yeah. Potatoes, potatoes are pretty popular, I heard. So. Yeah, we've got a lot of potato fans in the office. This one went over very well. <laughs> Yes. And and just to uh, just to clarify, dude, this is a Lion Chief engine. It's not a Lion Chief Plus engine. Correct. Right? This is a Lion Chief okay. set. So this will have just the the standard ready to run features, mm-hmm. um, Bluetooth five point uh, Got the voice streaming and recording in there, um, and able to run with the Lion Chief app. Awesome. And this, a, uh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Eric. Yeah, I had a side question that brought that that last question brought up is that. Um, to my knowledge, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think you guys have done any like LC plus two sets. Um, uh, unless I, am I wrong about that? Um, they did a Lion Master Big Boy set, I think. Yeah, but like for LC plus two, like it's usually just a separate sale of locomotive. Is I want? Is there any reason you guys haven't done any LC plus two sets? You know, like for instance, take the GP seven or the or the um, Berkshire with a Berkshire and make a set out of it. I mean, is there a reason you guys don't do that? We've, we've tried a few. Uh, most of them simply haven't sold that well. So that that's okay. the number one reason for us not to keep doing it. Yeah. I, yeah. I couldn't remember if you had done it. I didn't recall yeah. seeing it, but yeah. Okay. I imagine the price point probably. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's that too. Yeah. You're right. These, these are cool though. I think the one cool thing about these line chief too is, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I've seen this before is a lot of these little lion chief sets. Uh, the engine has like, like road specific crew talk and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm not um, sure if this one does, but I was just curious. Yeah. Each set um, I get with Tracy in our audio department and write a script and everything is, is recorded specific to that, that particular ready to run set. Awesome. Is Corey the engineer on this engine? I'm curious. Uh, to be determined. She, I, I know she was on, on a previous engine, but that's a secret. And we don't talk about it. So. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> you do? <laughs> it was the, I think it was Amtrak or. Yeah, something now. along those lines. <laughs> yeah, we won't say, we won't say it because <laughs> so, I don't want to give yeah. away any secrets. No, if we so. tell them, we have to kill them. We can't, you could always. <laughs> 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 you can strike that if you want to, but we'll <laughs> All right. Hey, Looney Tunes. How cool is this spread with all this great Looney Tunes stuff here? I um, if- I think we went a little wild with the Looney Tunes items, you know, coming off of, <laughs> of Warner Brothers 100th anniversary. Um, you know, they, they revealed to us that a lot of their Looney Tunes products was really doing well, and we wanted to continue on with that. Um, what better way to do that than to have Wiley Coyote and Roadrunner um, heading up the FT locomotive with all the wonderful characters there. I mean, having Wiley Coyote, um, you know, just getting hammered by the locomotive is, is something that we have actually seen painted on real life locomotives. So what better way to, to immortalize that than to put it on this Looney Tunes set here. That's really yeah. cool. And it, we did not leave any character off of this set. There are, if you have a favorite Looney Tunes character, chances are they are featured on this set here. Um, yeah, you got a lot of them there. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's super fun, super bright, but harkens back to, you know, those of us who did Saturday morning cartoons. Uh, these Looney Tunes characters are, are a big hit. Um, mm-hmm. You know, adding the rolling stock on with having the Tasmanian Devil in the lenticular boxcar where he's kind of shooting across it, causing havoc. Um, you know, that's just always been a memory for me, which is why he's one of my favorite characters. And then I think the coolest piece after the set on, on this spread here is the um, Dynamite Factory. Um, taking technology that we used in the, the Sergeant Stumpies, where we had the, the exploding fireworks uh, store here, um, packing that into this factory here and really making it an Acme factory um, with the fiber optic LEDs, um, the sounds, the smoke. Um, all kinds of fun little details on there. There's different ad- Acme advertisements on, on both sides of it, all the different products that, that Acme would carry. Um, we're going to have a lot of fun putting sound effects in this one. Um, it, I think it's going to be a real big hit. And then obviously you've got to get some additional dynamite barrels to, to spread across your layout and near the factory after it's exploded. Is that dynamite factory? Is that like a new, 
new tooling for a building? It's with new to Lionel tooling. So this okay. is this okay. is previous okay. uh, MTH tooling that we have um, updated to make our own. Um, we actually okay. did it not too long ago as the um, Budweiser Brewery with the the Budweiser lighting on the top, and that did so well. And I really wanted to use it again, and we thought it'd be fun to explode it. Ah, very cool. Yeah, that that is a really cool looking building, especially for Looney Tunes fans. Obviously, I think this will be, I think this will be quite a very popular popular items on this page. Yeah, we hope so. Um, I've heard a lot of good things already about it, and and I'm looking forward to um, seeing some good sales on this item. All right. Uh, any other questions on this? Nope. All right. 74 and 75. So uh, we got some more Looney Tunes <laughs> for you on 74. But wait, there's more. <laughs> so, uh, so at the very top there, you see there's a Looney Tunes hand car. And this is a conventional hand car, much like the ones you saw with like a Polar Express elf car, Toy Story hand car. Um, and it ties back in design to... Uh, Megan's set, diesel set that you just saw and her awesome accessories. And of course, we couldn't help ourselves but to feature, uh, you know, Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck. They just have this beautiful, frenemy, complicated relationship that just works so well on a car like this. <laughs> and then uh, below, um, again, alluding back to what Megan was talking about with Saturday morning cartoons, um, we've actually uh, been able to capture screenshots from some of those famous episodes. And this is actually, uh, these cars at the bottom here are uh, of a series that we started back in 2019 uh, that all follow the same look and feel. So as you can see, we're featuring Hair Trigger. Um, and this is fun because Bugs, Money, Bugs Bunny and Yosemite Sam are actually having it out on a train uh, with a lot of cool scenes there. And then Devil May Hair, which features one of my favorite characters, Taz. And he happens to be getting married in this episode, which I just found to be hilarious as a kid. Um, so a great, a great way to relive <laughs> memories. And if you're, if you're one of those collectors that likes the old vintage throwback cars, then these are definitely the ones you want. And these are printed and assembled in the USA, um, which leads me to the right side of your uh, screen. And on the last pod, or on our last podcast together. I had mentioned that we were sort of transitioning from um, away from just the Battlefield Honor series uh, and presidential series, and we were starting to move into American history. And, uh, you know, it's easy when you have an in-house uh, history buff like Ryan to feed off of. Um, and also 2023 was just packed with amazing um notable uh, moments, events, figures in American history that we just couldn't help ourselves. We kind of went all out. And so to just list some of them that you're going to see on this page, 250 uh, years since the Boston Tea Party. And we have almost 30 years, or will be in October, since the Battle of Mogadishu. 120 years since the first flight uh, with the Wright brothers. And for those who are North Carolina, that's extra special. And then my favorite is actually 160 years since the Gettysburg Address. Um, I lived less than a half hour from Gettysburg, so I paid a lot of visits. And so uh, you're going to find a lot of cool, fun facts and maybe some things you didn't know on the cars themselves. Um, and in cases like Battle of Mogadishu, you're even going to get some of that roof detail. So i um, really excited to bring these forward. And if you're a collector of series like this, you are in for a treat because it's no secret we're actually approaching America's 250th anniversary in the next few years. And so there's plenty of room for us to uh, grow here. These are, these are really cool, Corey, by the way. So I, I really like, and I think we saw this on the last catalog is the, um, the images that are printed on the top of the, the box cars as well, which kind of really make it like pop. So yeah, absolutely. yeah well done. We'll be, We'll be doing that a bit more in the future as well, sneaking some of those taglines and fun images there for you. Awesome. All right. Actually, you know, I did have one question. If you're doing American history, uh, you know, I'd like to see uh, a Nikolai Tesla car. That would be really cool. Oh, yeah. Now you're speaking my language. With like, you know, some kind of like a electrical thing going on in the middle or <laughs> something. But, you know, just a little recommend. Just, just a little uh, 
They have a Tesla coil in the middle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. We have the biggest running list ever, and I'm probably way too excited about it. So we have to filter okay. all our ideas down to, you know, boo, just one spread or something. But <laughs> yeah, well, just think without Nikola, Nikolai Tesla, there wouldn't be any uh, Lionel trains. I hear so you. I hear I'll just you. kind of put it that way. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> the father of AC power. Uh, all right. So. <laughs> this is I think this was people had thought this this was a joke, but it actually wasn't, right? This weather balloon. Yeah, April Fools come to life. <laughs> yeah. I ordered one of these when they first were announced, and uh I gotta ask <laughs> this this can be off the record, but like I gotta ask, did the people at the factory in China say anything about this, or are they just like, <laughs> okay, whatever? <laughs> Not one word to me personally, but you never know. <laughs> You never know what they might be saying. I don't know. <laughs> I thought that was great. It was a it was a great thing to see. It was a hit. I did notice your your name as one of the the early sales orders on that, and I said, "Oh, look yep. at that." Um, <laughs> but yeah, this is limited availability too because um, we did do the campaign for this right when uh, we announced that it was not a joke. Um, so these will actually be, be delivering by the end of the year. So if you haven't ordered one, you should get on that right away. So did it. Okay. So the timeline was it, it started off as a joke and then people were like, and then it became not a joke, right? Mm-hmm. Like there was such a re- response to it that it, we said, you said, Oh, maybe we should make them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. Yeah, it, I like how weather is in quotes. It, it got it got a great response, and to be able to to actually you know bring it to life uh, was very exciting for all of us. And what a surprise for all you guys to to find out that oh yeah we're actually going to do it. <laughs> I think now you guys will be side eyeing every April Fool's joke that we do. So um, can't promise that everyone that that we throw out there will be made but this one was a nice surprise yep. i'm gonna shoot to the bottom really quick because i think there's some really cool like new smoke scents down there um i'm curious what american actually vanilla bourbon sounds really good so does the bay leaf and tobacco but what is american summer um you know it kind of harkens back to the old like american is apple pie so it's going to have a really fun apple pie scent to it. Gotcha. That's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, we introduced quite a few new scents in 2023 C1 and uh, felt that it was time to highlight them again because we had the introduction of the um, smoke bottle with the needle applicator. Um, we've noticed a lot of people um, might be struggling with um, some hard to reach smoke units and what better way um, to help them reach the smoke units than to offer um, some needle applicators. These bottles fit our standard smoke fluid. You just pour it right in there and, uh, you know, something like that um, exploding building there where the smoke unit is going to be behind a door. Um, this needle applicator will really help. And and again, having some new smoke fluid scents that should be delivering by the end of this year um, to, to add to all of the sense that you guys already have, um, was really exciting to develop and put together for everyone. Yeah, that's cool. I always like having uh, new smoke fluid scents for sure. Yeah. I would expect that we would see more of those, um, probably next year. Um, the smoke fluids here should again be delivering by the end of the year. And there are already a long list of, of more that we'd like to do. I'm really excited about these Mickey Mouse hand cars. I'm more, I, I ordered one. Yeah, the, the buzz is growing and growing. Um, we have seen quite a few samples, and I'll let Corey talk about it. Um, but, yeah, they're they're super popular, and we're excited to see these, these be delivering here in a bit. Oh, yeah. Um, these are going to be actually shipping out this um, August. And uh, they're going to start to land, and there'll be some, a few surprises along the way. But I do suggest that if if you do want a hand car, you go ahead and get one now because um, the quantities are already running low on, on these pre-orders. And yeah, like Megan was saying, the response was a bit overwhelming, actually, um, in in the best way. So 
I'm very excited to see these. And, and once you see them in person, it'll just like blow your mind how, um, and, and I, I'm proud of the team for really the, the matching the originals so closely and working yeah, that's, really hard to get that right. Yeah. That's what I like about the pictures in this description is that it's, you know, it's not just Mickey and Minnie Mouse on, on a hand car. You actually tried to emulate the appearance of the original, which is really cool. Absolutely. And we're already sold out on our uh, our platinum one you see there with the, the jewel tone effect on Mickey and Minnie. Yep. Um, that was sort of a modern twist on the hand car, you know, from Lionel. But those other four are original colors and two of which you're going to see popping up in the fourth quarter. But uh, if you are interested in the red or the orange, or you, maybe you've already have one, those are still open, available, and ready to be grabbed. So are you saying that uh, these could be under people's uh, Christmas trees for Christmas? <laughs> I am saying yes. If you order these, you will have them I under gotcha. your tree for. Christmas. Okay, I'm just, I'm just, yeah, I just wanted yeah. to see if these, these uh, are definitely know, in before Christmas, right? Yeah, and and like I said, some of these cars are going to be exclusive to certain channels. Um, so you're going to want to keep an eye on Lionel store or Lionel.com forward slash hand car, so you're up to speed. Um, but yes, they'll be in in plenty of time for you to enjoy for the holidays. I think uh, the only last general question I had, uh, well, a couple of them. Um, first one is not on the list, but uh, while we're talking about current projects, uh, the status on the base three. Sure. Uh, so the status on the base three, as, as we're recording this, is it is uh, awaiting FCC testing and approval. And, uh, you know, fortunately, there's never any issues dealing with government bureaucracy and scheduling. And, and testing and approval. So uh, that hasn't delayed us at all. Um, but as far as design, development, uh, tooling, and everything goes, we are ready to go. Once we get that seal of approval, we give the green light to the factories and away we go. Uh, if everything goes as, as optimally as it could through that process, there's still a chance you could see them uh, by the end of this year. But being practical uh, or a little bit more pragmatic about uh, how long it'll take to get through testing. Uh, we're probably looking at first quarter of 2024 uh, delivery on these. Okay, cool. Uh, then I have another one on the uh, status of the guy that's asking about the Billups crossing gate. Those are a lot further along. Megan, you, you might have a, uh, that might be more at the top of your mind as one of your projects. <laughs> yes, um, I believe, and I don't have the shipping schedule up right now, but I believe we should have those by the end of the year as well. Is that is that the danger death crossing? Um, yes, it's the heavy metal okay. crossing gate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what, cool. you, what you're like saying this. is I should have the train around and put Metallica on my uh, Bluetooth radio tower, right? Yes, please, and send me video <laughs> when you do it. Okay. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. I got one last one. Is um, uh, He's asking about uh, the Disney IP and asking if uh, Lionel has ever inquired with Disney about doing a run of the theme park trains. Sorry, I muted too quickly there. I think that's up to the parks. Um, the parks kind of dictates um, what they want us to do year over year. And if it's something that they're interested in doing, um, we'd be happy to work with them on that. Um, but right now with the D100 uh, being the top of focus, I don't know what their future plans are. Okay, perfect. Um, that's everything someone... I got. That's it. I just have one correction to yours, Matt, is that I don't think you should be playing Mega, uh, Metallica. I think you should be playing Megadeth. No, 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 no wait, wait, wait. Spinning Bullets by Megadeth would be perfect. Well, how about some Iron Maiden? <laughs> All of the above. Please take video. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh all right. Anyway, moving on. Um, so does anyone else have any, uh, any kind of wrap up questions or, or Eric, did you have any kind of uh, last questions to ask? Um, no, I'm good. I, I, I like some, I like the stuff in this catalog. It's got some good, nice stuff. Uh, good selection of uh, a variety of things. Seems that there's a little something there for everybody. So, uh, yeah, uh, overall, I like it a lot. Real excited about several things in there. Uh, Matt Z, how about yourself? 
Uh, I can't think of any follow-up questions, but actually I have one for Ryan. It's one that Johnny usually asks. Um, actually, I'll ask it to all the guests here, uh, Megan, Corey, and Ryan. Uh, just pick a favorite uh, piece from this catalog. Uh, it's, you know, it's always a struggle on these, um, to pick a favorite. Um, I, there, there's a lot in here that, that is, uh, is very tempting. And, you know, I don't know, though the weird one for me, and I, I hate to say it cause it probably takes some thunder from, from Megan, but I really do love the Looney Tunes stuff. It's just so fun and, and, and childish and you know i'm kind of childish so uh it it uh it, it's a neat piece uh on the scale side of things you know the sd50s are always great the m1 i'm really proud of the way that's turning out um so yeah there, there's just there's a lot of neat stuff in this catalog well ryan since since you picked the looney tune stuff i'm gonna pick the the 280 set because the potato load in there is probably one of the coolest things we came up with all year um, as a, as a big fan of all things potato, um, that, that will be my choice for favorite in the catalog. Uh, well, I'm going to go the other way. I, I'm obsessed with those F-19 Pacifics. I think the Christmas and the Halloween versions are insanely awesome and they look extra beefy on the spread. So I can't help myself. I have to, I have to choose those. I I think I would have to go uh, off to Mir Corey. I think the, the Christmas and the those Halloween ones are fantastic. But I think uh, mine would would definitely just be the the Santa Fe F sevens for sure. Like that is like the 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 top thing in the catalog for me. Eric, oh gosh, that's going to be hard to pick one. Um, I'm pretty excited about the F nineteen and uh, and uh. There's so many good F7 paint schemes. I'm, I'm having a hard time zeroing it. I know I want to get the blue bonnet. I'm really excited about that one. Yep. So, yep. Um, yeah, between that and the and the F19, those are probably my favorites. And uh, for me, it's a toss up between the M1 and the FEF. I, I've been that M1, that passenger one is. I, I could see it behind that big K4 in a second. So I think that that one's great. And then that as delivered FEF. Oh yeah all great stuff ryan did a all you guys you guys do a fantastic job on these catalogs this one's absolutely no exception great work guys well, thank thank you very much and i it's always good when you when we go around the room and there's not really a whole lot of overlap uh that that tells me that we we cast cast the net right and and threw it out there and got got something that appealed to just about everybody and everyone's finding their own own little niche in the catalog and uh that's really good so that 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 is its own reward right there. Yeah. I think the pulse of the, of our discord server was that people really, really uh, enjoyed this catalog. There was like, there was a little something for everybody in it. And of course, being the the second uh, catalog of the year, it's nice that it's smaller. um, And even though there's fewer selections in here, um, it it, it helps with the wallet a little bit. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's what I was saying the other day. I was like, you know, it helps give you a little breathing space with your wallet. They can't all be 300 page catalogs. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, but this was, this was fantastic. And I obviously want to uh, give a big thanks to um, uh, you, Ryan and Megan and Corey. And of course, Eric uh, for just taking the time out uh, to come on the show here and talk to us about the catalog. Uh, we love doing this. It's definitely the one one of the episodes that we look forward to doing. And of course our listeners uh, love these as well for all the additional insight uh, that we can get uh, from, you know, going through the catalog and talking about all these engines and stuff. Uh, but uh, with that said, obviously, you know, we want to give our guests a chance to uh, tell people where people can find you on the internet. And so uh, Ryan, uh, where can people where can people find you or talk to you? Uh, well, you can find Lionel wherever uh, wherever good trains are sold, at least, right? Uh, <laughs> Lionel.com, of course, for, for all of your catalog and, uh, and information needs. We are on all of the social channels, uh, Facebook, Twitter, 
Instagram. Uh, what's the new one there that all the, the cool kids are using? Um, <laughs> TikTok. We got all those uh, those well covered. Um, just type in Lionel Trains and it'll it'll take you right there. If you have any questions or um, uh, further ideas, search thoughts, anyone out there listening, feel free to call in at one eight hundred four Lionel or send us an email at talk to us at Lionel dot com. And uh, in all honesty, those calls and uh, emails do get directed all around the department. So whether it's a new product idea or a product question that uh, out of the new catalog, maybe one of the uh, our normal uh, service agents doesn't know yet, they, they sh- shoot those right over my way or to Dave or Corey or Megan or whoever in the building is the right person. So that's really the easiest way to get uh, questions to any of us and uh, get an answer back right away on things. Great. And then um, Megan and Corey, um, is there, are you, do you guys have anything specific that people can reach out to you or are, are you pretty much on the same, uh, same wavelength as Ryan? I'm going to echo Ryan's uh, sentiments there. And uh, Megan, anything from you? Yeah, I would say, I would just say, check out our TikTok because uh, Corey and I have done a few, a few fun things on there um, for the catalog. So um, check that out. But again, like Ryan said, talk to us or 1-800-4-LION-L. Uh, send those questions those ways and uh, the wonderful people in the call center will get those over to us. Awesome. Uh, and Eric, uh, where, where can people find you? Um, on YouTube, it's uh, youtube.com slash Trains, or just search for Eric Trains on YouTube. And then my website's ericstrains.com. And I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, the whole, the whole nine yards. Fantastic. Uh, Matt Z, how about yourself? You can find me on YouTube under Matt Dash Train Lover 9943. Uh, Facebook under the same name. Instagram is Matt's.hobbies. And uh, also on the Matt Matt Discord server as well. And again, guys, huge thank you to all you guys listening and uh, to everybody, all the guests on the show tonight. Fantastic uh, catalog and just great conversation overall. Had a great time. Uh, you can find me on YouTube at WC Monterey Road, and I'm under the same name on Facebook and on Instagram as well. So again, uh, thank you for our guests for taking time to come on the uh, episode tonight. And of course, a big thank you to all our listeners of the Matt Mad Podcast. Uh, we do this because model railroading inspires us and you inspire us to keep making these episodes. So again, a uh, big thanks to all our listeners and uh, just a really quick, uh, quick uh, tidbit. Uh, we just hit our 50th, 50,000 download, I think, Matt. Is that correct? Uh, that's what you told me earlier, so we'll go with that. <laughs> I'm glad you listened to things I say. But yeah, uh, we hit our 50,000th download of our podcast, which is was pre- pretty exciting. Uh, we're still a young podcast. This is only our 65th episode. Uh, but we're going to keep doing these as long as people are listening. Uh, with that said, uh, everybody, uh, have a wonderful night. Take care, everyone. Thank you, guys.